Good morning, and grace and peace to you. That is great news about the number of views we're receiving, having, I guess. And uh, we continue to pray for that number to increase. But we want to remember that the best way to transmit the gospel is one person to another. And we can reach out, and we need to reach out with every tool and uh, opportunity that God gives us, but it's one person telling another what great things the Lord has done for them. Thankful for Rick that he got things worked out from last week because we had lost the audio, and he got that all figured out. So I know it gave him some trepidation. <laughs> all right. You want to turn to Joshua 24, we're going to talk about choosing Jesus, and thank you for that song, Jim. Life is a whole series of choices, you know, from the mundane, if you will, what you're going to have for supper, what kind of a snack you're going to have, and uh, you could go through that, you know, we have a nice snack shelf in our, in our house, in our pantry, which causes problems for somebody, you know, whether it's the pretzels, the potato chips, the tortilla chips, the uh, cheese crackers, you know, we could go on. You, you don't have anything like that, do you? A candy dish on the table? No, you don't have anything like that either. You know, and the, maybe what kind of shirt you're going to wear for the day or ensemble, you know, I was going to celebrate Valentine's Day today and wear my purple blazer with the yellow slacks? <laughs> Shirley said no. Uh, I didn't get a choice on that one. Anyway, and then we have important choices we need to make, you know, maybe about where we go to school, uh, what bank we're going to use, uh, kind of job and that kind of a thing, uh, who we're going to marry, are we going to marry or not, those kinds of things. And then there are the life and death choices we make. And we do make life and death choices. We choose good or evil. We choose right or wrong. Do we choose God or the world? Do we choose Jesus or do we choose Satan? Life and death choices. And you know, we make those, some of those, every day. Even Christian, you know, we've chosen Jesus, we want to follow him, and we've been baptized, and we're doing our, uh, our best, if you will, with his help. But there's still times when we still have that choice, Satan throws it right in front of us. You have to choose good or evil. It's not automatic, even for a Christian. In our lesson today, uh, well, let's read Joshua 24. I didn't read that yet, did I? I was going to jump right ahead. This is a familiar passage. We've all heard lessons from it. The situation is uh, the Lord had led Joshua and uh, the army of Israel to conquer Canaan at this point, and they're kind of getting ready to settle in. And Joshua says, Now therefore... Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served which were beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, it's an interesting study through the Old Testament that the Israelites never really did give up their gods. Uh, there were household gods. He talks about beyond the river. I think that goes back to uh, the uh, Laban's household up there in uh, Mesopotamia that uh, they had their household gods and they... Uh, I believe it was Rachel hid them under her camel's saddle in the, 
in the tent when they were coming back because she had brought them with her. And we see this picture that they, they continue to have their idols even though they, they worship the Lord God. And then, of course, in Egypt, Egypt was filled with idols and they were slaves down there for 400 years. And uh, that influenced them as well. And so it was a difficult choice even for them after God had led them through the wilderness, show them the mighty signs to uh, free them, cross the Red Sea. They still had these idols, these other gods. And they had to make a choice. Are you going to serve the Lord God who had just rescued you and given you this, brought you into this great land and showed you his power by driving out the Amorites? Or are you still going to serve these other gods? It's a life and death choice for Israel, and to a great extent, many of them still struggle with that all through their history. Let's go to John 18. We're going to talk here about choices again. And as I was uh, thinking about this and, and working up this lesson, it was just amazing to me how many choices were made when Jesus was crucified. How many opportunities there were there for someone to step up and say, this shouldn't happen. But they didn't. And I think there are lessons here for us in life. As we talked about, we're having to choose at different times. We're going to do right or wrong. We're do, going to do good or evil. We're going to choose the Lord. We're going to choose the world that we can see these choices right here as Jesus was being led to his crucifixion. So we're going to go to John 18 and start in verse 28. And this is after they had taken him before the high priest and had that sham trial there. It says, when they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the praetorium, that was the governor's uh, residence, and it was early, they themselves did not enter into the praetorium so that they would not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Therefore Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They, they woke him up early in the morning, you know. And Pilate coming out, of course, he's got to deal with it. He's the governor. And he's dealt with the Jews before, you know. The Jerusalem and Judah was a hotbed of insurrection and trouble for Rome all the time. Now he's like, you know, now what's going on? What's going on with this guy? And they answered and said to him, if this man were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. So Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. To fulfill the word of Jesus, which he spoke, signifying by what kind of death he was about to die. Now, as I was looking at this, I saw one choice by the Jews that were there, the assembled Jews. They chose hypocrisy over being open and honest. They had delivered Jesus up because of envy. We read that in Mark 15. In John 12, the Pharisee says, you know, behold, the whole world has gone after him. They were afraid of losing their place. There were no substanti substantiated accusations against Jesus at that trial. They had to bring in false witnesses. And of course, the only thing that really condemned him in their mind was the fact that he, he conceded and said, yes, I, I am the son of God. You say I am. And of course, that was blasphemy to them. But here's, here's the hypocrisy. They had already condemned him to death. You see, we wouldn't have delivered him to you unless, you know, we thought he was deserving of death. But they don't go in to the governor's house. They would defile themselves and they couldn't eat their Passover. They had prejudged Jesus but they were so concerned about their religion 
that they wouldn't go in. They chose hypocrisy over truth, over doing the right thing. They were so mired in their tradition. That Passover, of course, was to commemorate their freedom from Egypt when this God they serve brought them out. God who gave them freedom, gave them all their blessings, given them laws. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, mind, and strength. And They seem to have forgotten that. But boy, they were going to keep that Passover. And I was thinking about that, how easy it is to go to church and then dismiss the words of Jesus during the week. Love one another. Forgive one another. Do good to another person. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Make disciples of all the nations. You know how, how easy it is. Just, maybe we don't dismiss, but we forget. We, we don't put it first place and have it in our heads. That he's our master, and he is teaching us and telling us how to live the righteous life, the, the fulfilled life. It's easy to fall into this trap that the Jews fell into. Let's read on, 33. Therefore Pilate entered again into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own initiative, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests delivered me to you. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world... My servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore, Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, those famous words, what is truth? When he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you wish then that I release for you the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Here Pilate has a choice. He's already looked at the man and he said like, Okay, what's wrong here? But right here, after a brief examination, he says what? I find no guilt in him. I find no guilt in him. Pilate had to make a choice. Do you do the right thing? Or do you try to please somebody else? Do you do the right thing, or do you try to please someone else. If that were true, why didn't he let him go? That was the right thing to do. He said, I find no guilt in him. He's not guilty of anything. And of course, you know, that's what we expect from our government officials, right? It's what we expect. We don't always get it from judges, governors, and presidents, and anybody else to elected office, that they'll do the right thing, follow the law, the Constitution, or whatever. This has been established. But Pilate chose the easy way. Let the crowd decide to please the people. You know, this is a trap we all fall into and is so easy because this is pressure, especially when it's maybe our spouse, child, good friend, 
Maybe we're in a group of people and we know the right thing to do, but we're so afraid of offending somebody that's close to us. So we choose not to do the right thing. It can be difficult, but we have to make that choice. I think that's one reason why this country has kind of gotten where it is right now. People have been afraid to stand up for what's right. And they just keep giving in and giving in and giving in to the crowd, giving in to the loud voices, being afraid of what might happen to them, what somebody might say about them, what somebody might per perhaps do to them. You know, we as a church have got to... You know, been, we've been kind of on this theme and off this theme for a while. We've got to start standing up for what's right. Doing what's right. Not being afraid of what somebody might think or say. To do what's right in the eyes of God. To choose Jesus. And not choose ourselves. Of course, the Jews' choice here is obvious. They chose Barabbas over Jesus. It's interesting that Barabbas' name in Hebrew means son of the father. Very ironic. But they allowed envy and hatred to cloud their minds, and they chose evil over good. You know, it says here Barabbas was a robber. Other gospel says he also committed murder and an insurrection. He was a criminal. He was a wicked man. But they wanted him back on the street. And Jesus, whom they envied, whom they just hated, for whatever reason, they wanted dead. So they chose evil over good. They chose the world over God. They chose a creature over their creator. What a sad day that was. What a sad day. What they had done here, they had allowed their feelings to choose for them. Envy, hatred, that's what was driving this. He was not guilty. They hadn't bothered, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, they hadn't really bothered to investigate about the Son of God and the prophecies fulfilled and all that. They just jumped to conclusions. They couldn't believe it. And this is another thing that, that we have to be very careful of in life is just letting our feelings drive us. Uh, so many people in situations, it's what I call the, the hot stove syndrome. Anytime somebody says anything that's contrary to what you think or the situation at hand or uh, does something that you're, you're not familiar with or whatever, uh, something that you don't like, why well, it's immediately the, the hot stove. You know, you put your hand on a hot stove and you pull it right back. Boom, it's a reaction. Reactions are only good in an emergency situation. And so many people, when they in it, in these situations, when their feelings are touched, they just react and they're almost always negative. They don't pause to really think, to step back and make a wise, reasoned response to the situation. The Jews were just reacting. They had not really investigated the Lord So be careful to do the right thing, to choose Jesus, and not just react. Not let feelings drive you through life. Think it through. Go to the scripture. Ask it for it. We had the lesson here, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the two-word prayers? Say those prayers. Lord, help me in this situation to do what's right. Let's read on, John 19. Pilate then took Jesus and scourged him. That was in our 
Isaiah 53 reading. Many of those who were destined to be crucified actually died under the scourging, it was so bad. Their backs were just torn apart and the blood started to flow. The shock was terrible on the body. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and put a purple robe on him. And they began to come up to him and say, Hail, King of the Jews, and to give him slaps in the face. Pilate came out again and said to him, Behold, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. There it is again. He went ahead and scourged him. He says, I don't find any guilt in this man. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. So when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out saying, Crucify, crucify. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. There it is again. Come on, Pilate, where's your backbone? The Jews answered him, we have a law. And by that law, he ought to die because he made himself out to be the son of God. Here again is a Jew's choice. Their rigid tradition and law versus grace and truth. You know, that, when I read that, it just kind of gives me chills. We have a law. And by that law, he ought to die. You know, laws are good if they're used lawfully. I believe that it was Paul wrote that. And not as a club on people's heads. Good laws that are enforced justly protect people on both sides of that law. Do you know that? Both sides. The one who might be offended and the offender. That law protects both. It's a guideline. I always like to use this illustration. We have these laws on the books about not parking where they have a yellow line on the curb. We're all familiar with that. Well, let's take this hypothetical, you know, somebody's driving down the street and right up ahead of them, uh, somebody walks out in front of another car and gets hit. Fall down in the street and they obviously need help. They've been hurt badly. So the guy that's following pulls over along a yellow line. He runs up, gives help, calls 911 with his cell phone and the ambulance comes and so forth and so on, they take care of the problem. And when he goes back to his car, there's an officer standing there saying, I'm sorry, I have to write you a ticket because you parked along a yellow line. Now, is he guilty of parking on a yellow line? Yes, he is. But what were the circumstances? He pulled over there to help somebody that was maybe even dying because of an accident. Is that what that law was there for? Or was it just because somebody was lazy and didn't want to find another parking place and parked there for three hours? You see what I'm saying? Jameson sees what I'm saying. Laws have a are guidelines to be used. And we even see in scripture where at times God did not enforce a law because of circumstances. But the Jews were rigid here. We have a law. And as we said before, it says he made himself out to be the son of God. They're just really saying he cannot be the son of God. Did Jesus... Say that, yes, he said, I am. He says, God is my father. Was it true? Well, did they really investigate it? Or like we said, did they just have the hot stove reaction? Can't be possible. Did they investigate the signs he was doing, the prophecies made about him, the words he spoke, his background? You know, some said, you know, all they could think of, he came from Nazareth. 
but did they really go ahead and investigate where he was born? I think Don points that out. No, they didn't bother. It was just all on the surface reaction. We have a law. And again, for us to caution how easy it is to throw scripture at people without truly knowing their story and their situation. It is. I've done it. Until you sit down and talk and see, you know, I'm, we're not saying we're not absolving people of doing things that are wrong, but we've all been in situations in which, wow, we did something wrong. And we thought we had a good reason to make that choice, didn't we? Yeah. But we're quick not to allow that grace to another person because all we can see is outside and see the behavior, see what they did, but we're not really investigating what was the situation. Why were you compelled to think you had to do that? So we need to be gracious and search out the truth. Verse 8. All these, you see all these things as Jesus is being led to being crucified. If somebody would have just done the right thing, somebody stood up, somebody said, wait a minute. But nobody did. Therefore, when Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid and he the statement about Jesus being the Son of God. Now understand this. Pilate was a Roman, and he believed in his gods. He believed in a lot of gods, and they were very superstitious that way. So that would have made him think twice, because, you know, they had all their stories about the gods coming down among the people and doing this and that. So, uh, you know, Pilate was a believer in gods, and in divine, if you will, power and visitations. He entered into the praetorium again and said to Jesus, where, where are you from, you see? Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, you do not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and I have authority to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no authority over me unless it had been given you from above. For this reason, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. As a result of this, Pilate made efforts to release him. Look at that. He made efforts. He tries to convince the Jews to let him go. That's what that means. But the Jews cried out, saying, If you release this man, you're no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes Caesar. Therefore, when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out, sat down in the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was a day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. So they cried out, Away with him, away with him. Crucify him. Pilate said to him, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Pilate here chooses his own self and position against doing the right thing. He's afraid. Anybody who says they're a king is not a friend of Caesar. The Jews were playing the political card right there. You know, the Romans had conquered many nations, many countries. And right now they had client kings who were ruling, you know, Herod was one of them, in contract with Rome, and Rome says, oh, you take care of that area and you're every, keep it peaceful and everything will be all right. You pay your taxes and we won't bother you. But they didn't want any rogue kings just running around, you know, oh, here's a king over here, there's a king over there, and, you know, they'd had a lot of that with insurrections and people claiming this and that. 
All Rome wanted was peace, and that meant don't trouble us, no matter what. So Pilate doesn't want to get in trouble with Caesar. Could cost him his, not only his position, but maybe his life. And he won. He calls himself a king. He's not a friend of Caesar. The brave and just choice would have been to release Jesus, but he didn't. Then the Jews' choice. And another, and I'm thinking my thought, in my opinion, in verse 15, when they said, we have no king but Caesar. What God must have shaken his head. Wow. Really? Seriously, as we say. They favored political security over serving the true and living God. We have no king, but they played right up to right up to Pilate. Yeah. We won't cause you any trouble, Pilate. You crucify this man. Caesar's our king. So sad. They favored their security over their freedom. They favored security over serving the true and the living God. They chose the world over Jesus. That's an easy one to do these days. You know, here and there, people of faith, Christians are being pushed, being tested by the governments about worship, about what they say about certain situations that the scriptures teach is wrong. The government isn't always friendly to the Christian. We know that from history. We know that from the first century and on. If I can remember these words of Ben Franklin, those who favor security over freedom lose both and deserve neither. And I think he was right. We're reading, I believe it's Galatians, for freedom Christ set us free. And we're not advocating you know, rebellion against governments, but we are advocating we need to serve the Lord God first, despite what a government might say, and do the right thing, choose Jesus, and then let, let things unfold. We can't just cave in to the political authorities. As a result, the 16th verse, so he then handed him over to them to be crucified. Because of so many wrong choices that people made, both the assembled Jews and Pilate himself, not choose to do what was right. Of course, we know it was God's will he was being offered up as the Lamb of God. But again, that just demonstrates the wickedness of mankind, the self-centeredness of mankind, and how we want what we want and not what God wants. Of course, God is making a point here that Jesus needed to be sacrificed because of our sin, which is so so openly seen here in this whole trial and this whole uh, narrative and, and situation that Jesus was being led to be crucified. The sins of the people. Let's never forget, you know, that God, Paul talks about the gospel. Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and he was buried and on the third day was raised again according to the scripture. Let's, we kind of forget that right there Christ died for our sins according to the scripture we really focus on the Christ died and we should 
But why did he die? Because of our sins, because of our iniquities, like we read in Isaiah 53, because of our transgression. That's why he had to die, because of what we had done that was wrong. What we had done that was rebellion against God. So, as we wrap up, choices in life that we make and still have to make from day to day, some of them life and death. Do we use the word? Do we seek the truth? Do we try to please God? Do we choose Jesus? Do we remember what he taught? Do we stand up for what's right? Or do we just shoot from the hip? Do we, are we making decisions fearfully for our own lives? By emotion, are we rushing to judgment? Do we favor the world? Do we just protecting our position? And I'll just leave you with these words. Choose Jesus. Choose wisely. God bless.